Reese, I'm wondering if we can talk a little bit about life before Comrade Detective. Mm -hmm. And when you were starting out in the entertainment industry, what was your strategy? Did you have a strategy? Did you end up here accidentally? Uh, yeah, I wouldn't say there was a strategy. Uh, at least I, I didn't know of one. Um, I. Uh, I mean, where I grew up was about as far from the film industry uh, as as could be. Well, not as could be. I'm sure I could have grown up in Siberia too. But uh, I grew up in a small village in, in South Wales and uh, really had zero idea of, of you know how you might penetrate the film industry or, or television. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was sort of just through. Lucky. I mean, again, I think me taking some risks and some gambles, and then uh, and then some happy accidents that I sort of found my way eventually to SNL. Um, there's a sort of long story in between, obviously, but uh, uh, yeah, essentially, I, I came, to, I went to New York, uh, knowing again that I wanted to work in film television. No idea what to do. New York seemed like the direction to head. LA felt like too much of a cultural leap at the time, and uh, and yeah, I you know I just I. I I had about five jobs uh, at sort of my first six months there. I was sort of catering and, and working in stores and all that stuff. And then luckily I, I got a job in a post-production uh, facility uh, that they edited commercials. And uh, I was working as a receptionist. And I, did, I was there for about sort of two weeks, I think, when uh, Jim Signorelli, uh, who was the longtime film director at SNL, uh, sort of came in to work on something. And I just sort of, and we ended up chatting and, uh, at a lunchtime and uh, randomly about two weeks after that he called up and just said uh, that his assistant was leaving and did I want to come and work for him um, so that was kind of my beginning because um, I, I didn't go to film school I, I studied theater so uh, it was a real weirdly fortuitous place to land because the, the film unit at SNL uh, is this sort of machine of film production where we're, they're producing films, you know, from start to finish in three days every week. And uh, and when I started, they were still shooting on film uh, as well. So it was a really amazing, you know, place to land and, and you know, suddenly be on set. And uh, so, yeah, that's where I kind of went there and then worked my way up uh, very slowly. <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah, and here I am. Well, that's fascinating so I yeah. guess the lesson too from that is you never know who you'll run into you don't exactly be polite to strangers right. <laughs> and uh, yeah I mean again it was it, it's uh, there's definitely moments when I've sort of made a choice to to uh, you know maybe be more aggressive or to, or to sort of you know you kind of you do have to assert yourself and 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 you know I, I take chances because I don't think you'll ever have the right amount of experience that someone's looking for uh, so uh, you know, at SNL, for example, my sort of le my trajectory sort of followed a pattern. The first few years of me, it, 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 like the SNL season is like a school year. Yeah, so it goes September to May, and then you have the summer off. Uh, you know, and, and you can you know obviously go do other things or not work. But I usually would go and work on something else, and um, and and then each you know September would roll around, and I my first few years I never knew if I was going to get hired again the next season. But, uh, you know, I'd inevitably a phone call would come with, with Jim and, you know, I'd usually sort of just maybe embellish a little bit about what I'd done that summer to sort of elevate my, my experience. So I quickly sort of went from being a PA to uh, a production coordinator the following season. And then, uh, and then I was his line producer, uh, sort of the, the, my third year at SNL, I was line producing the film unit. Um, and completely flying by the seat of my pants. I had no idea what I was doing and it was way in over my head. But, uh, you know, week by week got through it. And, uh, and then I did that for about, I was, I was the line producer there for about five or six years before I, I made the move to directing. And that's a whole other thing too. <laughs> Were you Googling things on your lunch hour? Like, okay, oh, how do I do this? Oh, sure, sure, yeah, I can get Production that. Production <laughs> is, I, I will forever, I, the, the line producer position is, it really is one of the most thankless uh, positions. I mean, you know, I, I commend people that that do it, enjoy it, and, and are good at it, because it's the, I, to me, it's one of the hardest jobs on set, because, you know, you're absorbing all of the responsibility that you really, the sort of practical responsibility is you, you know? So if a, if a PA doesn't wake up and, get in his truck and bring the camera to set or if the stage is locked or an actor doesn't show up or you know what all the myriad of things or the weather doesn't cooperate it all basically comes back to you to, to solve obviously the director's there creatively to you know constantly has to be doing the dance to solve the problems but 
as the line producer, obviously, that's it. You know, you've, you're the one who's got to keep the machine running and, and you know keep the budget in line and all that kind of stuff. And so it's it's really really hard and very very stressful. So uh, I again, that was the that was the sort of the terrifying learning experience was sort of suddenly realizing that your exposure was everything. <laughs> you know, so uh, yeah, it's I don't think it's something you can Google. You can only again, I think some people's personalities are made for it. Uh, uh, I don't think I was. I sort of managed to do it for all those years, and and again for me it was an amazing learning experience because you can you you know by becoming responsible for everybody, you inevitably had to learn about every you know position on set because you obviously had to troubleshoot any time anyone had an issue. So you get to know you know the the grip department and their equipment needs and what they do and the electricians and the art department and you'd. So it was a really good way just for me to really learn my way all the way around, and then the same through post production. Um, again, I just got really lucky. I sort of landed in this weird film school at SNL, and uh, you know, was on on the job training. So, yeah. Plus, with the stress of knowing that you may not come back. Exactly. Season, that's, yeah, that's yeah. yeah. No, exactly. So you always kind of again, you never rest on your laurels. You sort of take everything as like, well, you know, I'm gonna keep going as far as I can and you know because who knows like I might be looking for another job soon you know like not that they encourage a, 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 an environment of uh, insecurity sure. but you know it, I think it helps keep moving you forward uh, you know not to, to get complacent yeah sounds like good life training uh, yeah so it, then doing comrade detective sounds like it was much easier because I know you shot this all on spec and you had to mm -hmm. go over to the eastern block and sort mm -hmm. of location scout yes yeah uh, I wouldn't say it was easier. I mean, I, I think you know SNL has been an amazing sort of training. I think for uh, for a lot of production circumstances, I think I'm more comfortable with uh, you know sort of last minute uh, things and, and sort of change. And, and I, th I think I've learned an agility that maybe some people don't necessarily have to go through um, through working in SNL. So. Uh, it helped because there was definitely, you know, a sort of a fish out of water quality to sort of getting to Romania and getting to know a Romanian crew and Romanian cast and sort of figuring out how this whole machine was going to work. And we had a very tight schedule as well. It was sort of a ludicrously tight schedule for what we ended up doing. And um, and again, I think, uh, yeah, SNL sort of taught me the stupidity and the naivety to, to just take it on and go for it. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. not knowing is, is actually better. Uh, yeah, things. yeah. I, I, I think I'm, I have a weird addiction to, to people, uh, people freaking out around me and, <laughs> and, and sort of <laughs> trying to find a way through. Okay, well, that, that's an art in itself, and some people are actually really well suited for that, so it's yeah. off to you. Not yeah. everybody can. I, yeah, I, who knows? I don't think I do well in battle, but yes, that, that type of battle, <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> You're good at talking people down. Right, now, right, exactly. Like, yeah. Yeah. 